back. Here in the US, it's almost the 4th of July, so I thought it'd be fun to create this fireworks scene. A lot of the fireworks has been canceled this year, um, so it's kind of sad. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe we can bring the fireworks to us. So I'm gonna show you how to create this um, digital illustration using the Procreate app and a lot of the brushes that are included free with the app. Um, there's a lot of nice brushes that will help you create really pretty light effects. And without further ado, let's just get started. To create this image, it has lots and lots of layers. So we're gonna work in multiple layers, just blending between each layer. I kinda thought that it uh, would be pretty to create the fireworks effect over water so you can get these like nice reflections down here. So that's how I'm gonna draw mine. If you would like to make this land, um, you know, that's totally fine if you just want to focus on making like the fireworks in the sky and not worry about like doing the reflections in the water and so forth. But um, for this tutorial, I'm going to create it over water. So I've made a new document. I am going to include the colors that I'm using um, in the description. This whole palette will be available to you if you want to use it as well. I'll have a link, link for you so you can download it too. So let me just get that out of the way. We're gonna work out of this section called luminance. Um, and there are a lot of cool brushes in here that'll help you create these light effects. I customized one of them, which I'll show you what I did with it um, when we get to that part. Um, just so that I can have like a little more color included and not have to go back in and keep changing my colors. Um, since fireworks tend to have like a lot of like layers of colors sometimes. Um, so we're gonna go in this category here, luminance, and grab um, mostly the light pen, but that's included with your app. So those are the brushes we'll mostly use today. Before we do that, I just wanna get my scene kind of like set up and put like a horizon line and stuff like that, just so I know where my sky stops, where my land or my water begins, and where the fireworks are gonna be like shooting up from. So I'm gonna just grab a sketching pencil to do that. Just grab your favorite sketching pencil just to like get your lines in. A really easy way to make a perfectly straight horizon line is to turn on this grid, this drawing guide. And then you can um, actually turn on drawing assist and it will only let you create a line along these grid lines or you can just draw a straight line across, hold your pen down, and that creates a perfectly straight line and press a finger on anywhere on the screen and that'll create a perfectly um, horizontal line. So if, like for your horizon, you want it to be perfectly straight across, that's another way you can do it. I'm gonna turn drawing assist back off and turn the grid back off now that I got my horizon line down and just keep going. So I thought it may be fun to have like a little boat in the water just to give like that silhouette and kind of show like um, scale and size and whatever. So like some sort of like a, I don't know, like a yacht looking boat here. So something like that. And then of course we'll have like ripples and waves well, not really waves, but just kind of like ripples on the water and stuff. And then I want my um, my fireworks to kind of just be like a little bit overlapping. I'm gonna try to do like something like that in different areas of the sky shooting up. Maybe like one more up here. So that's like our general idea of where we're gonna place things. Um, and then I'm gonna make a new layer and this thing gets kind of hard to see, but you can uh, adjust your blending mode so that you can always see your sketch even on a dark background. Um, so first I'm just gonna add in my water um, right now, or actually, you know what, let's just make the whole, the whole background um, just like all black because the sky and the water for right now is gonna be um, all the same color. So I'm gonna do it in a new layer on top of the background color. So instead of using the, the background color and turning it black. I'm just gonna make it in a layer so it can always be like adjusted and stuff. And you can see your sketch is gone. But what you can do is set the blending mode to like um, lighten or I think subtract will do it. 
or exclusion. And then you can kind of see, like some of these will make it look lighter so it'll be easier to see um, your sketch again. So just choose the one that you feel you can see the best. And I'm just gonna leave mine, I guess, on exclusion. And then you'll be able to kind of place your stuff <clears throat> a little bit easier. Or I guess you could sketch it in white if you wanted to put the background color in um, first and then sketch it out with a white pencil. That would be fine too. So I am going to go in this layer number two that I made in between my black sky and my sketch layer and just start like adding in um, well, some of the fireworks in the sky. Let's start with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an illuminance section, this light pen, and a really bright color. So I'm going to start with um, maybe like this blue. I might end up doing like red, white, and blue rather than bright pink for this one. So another thing you could do before we sketch anything, I guess, um, is to pull up images of fireworks on Safari. Why can't I grab that? There we go. So if you pull up your Safari tab and put it next to your Procreate app, you can see like all these images of fireworks, which also gives you a good idea of how they look when they burst, how they look when they fall, and like the different areas that are light, if there's like really bright pockets and whatever. So it kind of will help you draw them if you want to do a little bit like more realistic rather than like real cartoony and loose. Um, so I'm just gonna look through here and grab a few that I like. Like I think that looks really pretty. So something like that or this one and that just helps give you like a better idea of what they actually look like when they burst because the first time I drew it it didn't have enough of like the spokes coming out and also they were kind of like straight and then I saw a picture that where they were falling and I thought well it looks better when it has like some um, motion to it where it looks like it's like arcing down and um, whatever. So this will help give you an idea. So pull up an image that you like and that can kind of be your guide. Let's see. I think I'm going to use like trying to find one that has like a lot so I can have an idea of like what different types look like and also when they overlap and stuff. And some images are like really heavily like photoshopped. Like it looks like they just copied and pasted a bunch of different uh, of the same burst in like all over the screen. I don't really want that because I want it to look more like real. All right, let's just pick one, Diana. Okay, let's see this. This is a good one because it shows how it sprays out and how it falls. Let's see. Okay, that's a pretty one. So I'm going to kind of like zoom it in. And I like this one too because it includes a lot of different colors. So it's not just one color. It's like blue, red, kind of like a gold. And I like that about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one and use it for like one of these side ones. Okay, so yeah, I'll grab this darker blue in that case. And I'm gonna use the light pen. And you can also test these out, kind of like see what they do before you go for it. Um, so you kind of know like what each one looks like and why. Um, we use different ones for different effects and whatever. So you could always test it out on your, your dark background so you can kind of like see what this is going to look like before you put it all over your fireworks. So just kind of like do like a quick swatch of each one and see which ones you like. So that's every brush that's included in the luminance section. I'm going to go with the light pen. So you can see how the very center is like, has like a bright spot and then they spray out and they kind of arc and curve all from the center, like spoking out that way and then this way. So I'm gonna try to do something like that. And also make sure the size is not like huge or it'll look less realistic. And you can see already like with that one stroke how that pretty much looks like the photo there. So just make a whole bunch of these. And they all start kind of like at the same center point there since that's where it explodes from. And just think about how they would fall as they burst and come down towards the ground. 
So that's like one pass. And then just keep layering. And you can press a little harder too to get it brighter. It'll make it um, more bright when you press down and a little bit bigger. So I think I like that for the blue and then I want to add for the if I was going to do only blue I would do like several more passes through just to really fill it in. But I want to add this other color this like goldish color. So let me see what this orange looks like. I'm going to do a new layer just so I can easily change it if I need to. And also I could adjust the color or erase pieces. Yeah that looks pretty good to me. Um, so I'm going to add that in on top of the blue. You can choose whatever color you wish. And I'm just going to scooch this over for now so I have more space to, to draw here. Okay, so that's as much as I want to add of the gold. And then I'm going to try to add a little bit of like these like sparkles in the center. So for that, I'm going to grab this one called Glimmer. Don't worry about this one here. I duplicated it and I changed some things in the color um, dynamics. But for this, I'm going to use the one that came with the app without any adjustments called Glimmer. And in a new layer, I'm going to add like these little sparkles here. So I want like really little and then you can kind of just like, well that didn't show up. You can kind of just like tap it down. If you go like in a sweeping motion, it's adding like a ton. Um, I don't necessarily want that much. So I'm going to try to just like tap these sparkles in. And I would like those to be a little brighter actually. So let me see if I can adjust some things in the blending modes and get it to be like real bright. Luminosity, maybe luminosity and then just duplicate it a few times like this. If you can see. But they're not like as bright as I want so I'm not going to do it that way. Let's try something else. Um, so let's try maybe add Yeah, you can see like on this one here how when you press add it makes it bright so I think I'm gonna do that and then just like duplicate it once see what that looks like yeah that's pretty good so I'm gonna duplicate it to make it a little more intense and then just merge those two layers together and I think I would like to just like reduce it a little bit to get it just kind of like these little smaller dots see how that looks Okay, that's more along the lines of what I was thinking. So the last thing, I guess I'll add a few more of these final like little fine strokes in the center. See how this one like comes out and curves down? Make sure you add some of those too because it's not only bursting out, it has like these ones that are coming towards you, um, which in real life would be easy to see it but in this since it's a flat image it's hard to tell but the way you can depict that is like having these little strokes coming out and curving down so i want to add some blue ones so i'm just going to go back to my blue layer and go back to my blue brush and the light pen and just add a few of those and you can see they're just really subtle but when you add a lot of layers like that even if you feel like it's not maybe worthwhile at first um, when you have the overall picture you can see the, the difference when you add just like a few extra details so I think that looks pretty good and I'm trying to decide whether I want to add that like smoky red stuff in the background but I think I'll save that for later and we can always add that with this pen called Nebula and you know, something like this. I might do it at the end with all of the fireworks so I can see like how much to add. But you would do something like that, like a little bit lighter than that. But anyway, I'm just going to leave that out. Okay, so that's my first firework. So I'm going to group it down so I can move on to the next one. So it's firework number one. Okay, so let's go back and find another image here that we like. So this one's kind of pretty and I like how these are overlapping. So I think I might want to add something like that. Um, and also I was kind of looking for, well these like how they, these ones where it's shooting up. <clears throat> I'm gonna add some of those too. 
like these. Well, that's a pretty one because it's red, white, and blue. So I think I'll go with that. So this one's kind of like a radial pattern. So I'm going to do red in the center and then blue and then the, this one that's like red and white on the outside. So I think I'll start with the biggest one and then add the other ones in separate layers. So let's grab red. Any colors that I use in here, I'll include in the palette that I post with this video. Let's try like that one. Okay, we have our light pen and a new layer. Okay, here we go. up with. I would like to add more layers on the inside and then I also wanted to make the tips of these white or like this yellowish color um, to kind of like duplicate what I see here. Um, I think you could also probably just draw a bunch of strokes and then if you wanted to you could um, recolor like blue in this area, red in this area and stuff but it won't have the same um, total effect. Well I guess at the end you could add these little white strips in but i kind of want to make mine in layers instead of doing that because i don't want it to look like this flat like where i just colored it in like that to change the color i want to actually make it in layers but if you wanted to try that and just do like a quick version you could re draw like the whole burst and then just recolor the the layers like the circles and then put a little bit of these like white pieces at the end to kind of get the same effect but I'm going to work in layers for mine, but I do want to recolor the tips of these. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn on alpha lock and let's try that um, same pen we used for this over here. So I think it was this orange and let me see if I can get the tips to be like really bright. Oh yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to change my brush to be a little bigger, but take note of the size I was using, which is 3% so that I can change it back. And I just want to get the outside of this burst to be like this really bright white. So I'm just going to do like something like that. And since alpha lock is on, it ensures that only that area is going to be um, colored and it's not going to spill out all over the paper. Okay, so turn alpha lock back off. And then I think in a new layer, I'm going to do like this blue. So I'm going to grab a really, really dark blue. It looks like it's black, but it's a, a dark blue that'll show up with this light pen. In a new layer, on top of the red layer, I'm going to just go through and create the strokes to create the blue center. do the same thing these ones where the tips are like that gold color well maybe not because when you zoom out you can see how it creates these really obvious rings so for this I'll just go through and add a few bursts with that bright gold color coming out all over the blue and you can see it doesn't always follow um, exactly where the blue is in fact, it has like a red trail at the beginning and then it turns gold. Um, so there, it's separate from the blue. So I'm just gonna like add a layer of that on top of the blue. Just go ahead and do it in a new layer so I can adjust things if I need to. And just, uh, I think a few will do the trick. and added in my gold burst and you can see how adding lots of layers really adds a lot of dimension to your fireworks and makes it look like really interesting and more realistic 
So next we're going to add in this center piece here with the red. And you can see it has like a whole model line. So I'm going to try to just do a whole bunch. And at the end I might come back in and just add some more lighter blue lines to this layer here. So I'm going to make a new layer um, actually underneath of these gold sparkles that I just drew. And we're going to make this one red. Which for the red I wasn't using this dark red, I was using this like orangier looking red. And that looked better when I um, tested out the colors. So I'm going to go with that. And you can see like, the center has like a whole bunch of stuff. So we want to cover up this whole dark area here. Um, and just add a whole bunch of strokes. So let's see. You know what a quick way to do that would be to do a drawing. Um, and then a uh, drawing assist. Just push symmetry and then options radial and rotational symmetry needs to be turned on and then you just scooch this dot let's see right to the center and then I'll only have to draw like a few lines since these ones are pretty straight coming out because of the year like freshly burst it's not like had a chance to really curve a whole lot yet I'm okay with drawing them like kind of like all straight at least for the first layer just to kind of like fill in the space and this will be so much faster so let me make this drawing guide like a little brighter so i can see it is that as bright as it gets okay done and then we'll use the red with the light pen again and it's at let's start with three percent and that is so much faster than having to go in and draw all of those lines The center might be too bright. Let's just see what it looks like. It's not bad. It's not bad. But it is a little bright there. So let me go back. You kind of use the same technique, but don't go all the way to the center. You kind of make them like all different lengths and stuff slightly. And then at the end, kind of put a few to the center, but not like a whole bunch. Okay, that's pretty good. And that was so much faster. And you can always resize your little burst here too, if you need to, to kind of cover more area. Let's use zoom out if you see that it needs to be a little bigger. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna turn off the drawing assist and get this guide out of here. And kind of like clean up this center portion. So I'm gonna grab my eraser, it's set on it on um, monoline real small kind of just get some of this really hard light out of here there we go so I just have it on like really light I turned the deracer down quite a bit I just want to get some of that out of there so it's not like this bright like white dot so use your smudge tool a little bit too Okay, I know there's a white dot there, but I'm gonna um, work with it because I wanna add more in anyway and then I'll see what it looks like if I need to erase it out or whatever because I don't want it to be like this really hard line. Maybe we'll just lighten it a little. Okay. So then I wanna add probably like a little more red. I think I, I'll just do it in the same layer with the light pen. I'm just going to go in and put some more strokes in. I'm going to turn this opacity all the way up. And my brush is on like, what did that say? Eight. And if you press a little harder, you'll get a brighter, brighter line. And then I'll just kind of make some of these like arced and stuff, just a little bit. And in the center, kind of make some of them like really arced like they're falling towards you okay so just like a few here and there sometimes it's all you need you don't want to overdo it and then some of them are reaching up into the blue I think they're actually part of this gold one um, but we don't need to like make it fully attached there 
and just kind of like add a few here and there. So something like that. And then back in this layer with the red and the white, I think I'll just put a little bit more. Let's see if we can do something like this. So if you have your first color selected and your second color, actually it's gonna change from, um, from this to that. I kinda wanna reverse. But then you can change your color dynamics and choose um, when you color pressure, when you push harder, the secondary color is going to show up. So I'm going to turn that up. And I think it's going to go from, I think it's actually like opposite of what you think. Oh no, it's good. It's good. Okay. So let's make from red to orange, but it's going to be like this gold color. So I'm going to add a few of those in on this outer layer here, just to kind of fill it in a little more. And then also I don't want it to be like such like a hard circle and be obvious that I just took a pen and went like that to get my colors. So using this color duo brush, it'll help with that type of thing. So you just go light and then when you press it turns to the orange. The only thing is that the size is changing as well and I don't really want that to happen. So let's go to um, Apple Pencil and then under pressure, see how the size it says it's going to change i don't really want it to change at all i just wanted to change colors in this case so i'm going to put it down to zero let's try that yeah so that's better so you can go light and then press and it'll give you that gold edge and i just want to add a few of those in here and there it is pretty subtle You can always play around with your color dynamics too and like make it um, go to the secondary color, like make that percentage lower or higher and just see how that looks. This one I could probably adjust a little bit so that it's not um, changing so quickly over to the gold because I think most of the stroke is looking gold. I'm just going to go with it for now. Okay, so that kind of just like fills it in a little bit more. And maybe we'll put like a few like kind of to blend in the transition here between the blue and the red and white. I guess that's supposed to be white. I keep calling it gold, but um, it's supposed to be red, white, and blue. And we'll just put a few in the center here which those need to be on the top. So let's put them in this layer here that's on the very top, just like a few more. And you can just keep adding layers as you need to, to kind of like get it to look as full as you want. You could go even further than this if you want to. But I think that looks good to me. So I'm gonna leave this one as it is and move on to one more. This one's kind of cool because it has like simple lines but then it has these like flare things. So I think I'll try that and at the end maybe add in a little bit of this stuff like down at the base. So let's go with this one. So I'm going to go with the gold which is this orange color with the light pen. It looks gold and it has like a stroke out and then the tip is bright. So I'm gonna to try to do that for this one here and kind of like overlap it a little bit over the center one. Let's scoot that over so we have more space to draw. So this is all fireworks number two. Let me group that up, get that out of the way, make a new layer. So this doesn't have very many um, overlapping like bursts at all. So I'm gonna to try to just do kind of like simple and see what we can come up with for that. So that's like the center ones that are coming and kind of towards you. Oops, fix that one. And then there's some that are going up further. So I'm just gonna work in um, layers as it spokes out.
And these ones do go all the way to the center, but they're really light. So I think I'll just turn this down halfway. You can use the drawing assist tool again to help you quickly fill in the space. Fill in the space and then turn drawing assist back off to add in some random strokes. I went through and I added a lot of extra lines in here with like a highlight and then um, a line coming back to the center and just like work my way around until I have came up with this. So next we're going to add like these flare kind of marks um, with bright white that are just a few of them coming out from the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the brush that's called flare and white for my color. Go ahead and make a new layer and then just kind of like tap in these really bright spots. So you can kind of play around with this a little bit. So when you when you put the, the spot, it's only going to make this line that goes out in the horizontal um, pattern. So if you wanted to have a lot of different angles like this, you need to turn your canvas and just keep adding on top. And then it'll give you more of a pattern like that, as long as you get it right in the center. There we go. So just add a few of those, and those will be like my sparkles. And then we'll add those like tails that are coming back in. And then we'll add these trails. So for that, I'm going to use this one called Boca Lights. And just turn it down really little. If you've got it real big, it's going to add like these like lens flare kind of things, but I don't really want that effect. For this, I just want it to look like um, kind of like a fuzzy trail. So I'm going to turn it down pretty low. You can kind of play around, around with it too and see like what size looks good on your painting. And just kind of like add like a trail coming back into the center. And it is pressure sensitive, so if you push harder at the top and lighten up the pressure as you come in, they'll trail off and get smaller. So I like that is what I was going for. And maybe I'll just add like a couple like layers of it here to really help it show up. Okay, so that looks pretty close to this as far as I want um, the detail level to be here. So let's see, maybe we'll add one more or a couple like little ones. And then these like um, ones that shoot off from the ground, like that, like the ones that are low in the sky. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, and then Boca Lace would actually work well for that too. So I think I'll make a new layer and I'll just go ahead and start on that while I have this um, brush selected. Some of those that kind of come from low in the sky and they're a little wider. So let's see what we can do with that. Let's emulate that a little bit. I kind of like how it's like fizzing up. You can change the brush size as you're drawing which sometimes helps and sometimes it's not that easy, but it might work in this case. Kind of like help it go down to like a trail of almost nothing. And then I'll add a little bit more detail in there. looking more along the lines of what I want. You really just have to work with these in layers. Or you're going to keep layering it on, is what I should say. I'm also working layers, but when you just keep going over this 
the same areas, just to add a little more with each stroke. It really helps to build up the weight and stuff and makes it look more like real fire. So this is what I've got for that. I kind of want to add like a little more color. I was looking at this one and that's pretty, how it's a little orangey and stuff. Um, but I think I'm just going to add a little color to this one. So I'm just going to turn on alpha lock and then just go back over. I have focal light selected, but I'm just going to go with that and just add like a little bit of this orange. Okay, so this one looks good. I think that's all with the further I want to go with that. I thought about adding in the background some of this like sparkle all over the sky. So I'm going to go in the very back layer and grab um, this really dark color that looks like it's black but it's really blue and go with this glimmer brush. Turn it up a little bit here and just kind of add like some of those sparkles in the, the background. And that looks pretty. Okay, and I think we'll just do a couple more little ones to kind of fill in the space. I'm going to put it in, my sketch is starting to get hard to see, in this circle here. Um, and add another one, like here. And I think we'll just add like a little bit at the end to kind of fill in and um, finish it off. So I'm going to put it all the way in the front. I think I'm going to do red, which is this like orangey red with the light pen. Or maybe even let's try this pulse. Let's see what that would look like if we drew it in a circle. So it's not quite right. I would do want it to be kind of like that shape, but um, that's not exactly what, what we need. So let's just go back to the light pen, clear this out, and I'll just draw it in. So I'm gonna just kind of like make spokes out like that all the way around. I'm not sure if I'm really happy with that. So I wish I could find an image for it. So let's just clear that out. Let's just make a smaller firework in that area. And it's just red like. Maybe we will use the deeper red. So I'm just gonna pull up an image of just like a whole bunch of fireworks and see if there's anything that we can use from that. Let's look at this grand finale kind of picture and see if there's something we can pull from that. So maybe like some of these simple ones or something that's just like, I guess it's similar to what we already have, but maybe we could just add a few more in and, and make it look like finished off. So I think I'll do something like that that has like a little bit less. Here's going to be like our center. I'll go over that probably with like the flare pen to make it a little bit less like a big circle and a little bit more like a shine of light. Just kind of have this like spray out like that. And then a few that are coming towards you. So they're going to be like these short pieces like that. And then right in the middle there, I want to use the flare just to give it like that um, little shine of white that spokes out from the center. So it's less like a hard circle and more kind of like a starburst kind of thing. Okay, so that's good. And you know, we could actually just duplicate it and just kind of like change it up a little bit so it's not entirely obvious that it's the exact same one. And then just put it along the in different places along the skyline here. You could even change the color a little bit so that it looks like they're fresh, like all different ones. And that kind of feels like these too. So let's make that one different color and just adjust it using this wand, magic wand and go to hue, saturation, brightness. 
and just adjust the hue a little bit. And I do want to kind of keep it like red, white, and blue. So I'm going to choose something in like the blue family. You could brighten it up or whatever. Just change it up a little so it's not looking like you cut and paste the same starburst all over the place. I'm trying to go for like maybe like a more gold one there. Something like that. Okay, that looks good. Okay. And then we'll just add like a little bit more spray in this guy. And I think that should just about do it. So let's get rid of that. This glimmer that I modified, all I did was um, duplicate the, the original brush by pressing duplicate here. And then I went in and I changed the color dynamics so that every time you tap it down, it'll change. Um, colors. So I went in and I changed the, um, the stroke color jitter. Yeah, it's the only one I changed. So this one here, I just adjusted the hue up. Mine's 55% and saturation is 31%. And so with each time you use it, the color will be a little bit different, which makes it kind of nice because then you don't have to go in and like choose a different color a million times. You can kind of just stamp it in there and it'll change colors on its own. The only thing is I don't want to attach it to that starburst there. So I'm going to make a new layer and then I'll use that pen to kind of fill in the space a little bit here. So I'll put it all the way on the top and just kind of like stamp it in. And that's pretty. I think I actually want to put it all the way in the back. And then I might change the, the brightness a little bit just so it shows up a little more. I don't want it to be so saturated and the colors to be so obvious. And I kind of like my red, white, and blue theme going here. So I don't necessarily want like a bunch of pink and stuff. Maybe something like that. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good for the sky. You can always go back in and add more. Um, you can just like keep going and add more layers to, to make just more dimension and stuff. But I think I'm gonna stick with this. And then you can either make this grass or like um, silhouettes of like people or water. I'm gonna just do mine as water. Um, and how I'm gonna do that is make a layer in the very back. <clears throat> I'm going to grab this um, dark bluish purpley color and the nebula brush. And first, I'm just going to kind of like fill in the sky. Okay, so we're just going to make like a straight line across the... Whoa, that's way too dark. Let's turn that down and make the brush bigger. So the sky is not going to be completely black. It's going to be like kind of smoky and also just... Um, naturally the night sky is not like pitch black. So I want to add just like a little bit like that. On the water, I kind of wanted that to be like a nice crisp line. So I'm going to go in and just use my select tool with the rectangle and chase it, oopsies, straight across. And just cut. So then that's like a nice crisp line. So then my water, I'll make a layer on uh, top of the sky there. And I kind of want to um, copy this and flip it down. So I'm going to group all of these things together, make a duplicate of that folder. As long as you have enough layers available, it'll let you. And then flatten it down. And then what I'm going to do is actually I'll make a duplicate and keep that as a backup. So I'm going to turn that one off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, use this select tool and then flip vertical, scoot it down, and then you can distort it a little bit here so that it has like perspective. And it's also going to be on water. So it's going to be, um, distorted further. Something like, something like that. 
And then it's gonna be like way down on the opacity there. And also you can go up here to uh, liquefy with the push tool and kind of like swirl through it because it's gonna be on like ripply water. So kind of just like push it around to make it really distorted. And I'm just gonna keep turning it down until it's like, it's just like barely visible, but it still adds like a little bit. And then we'll add some ripples in the water with our light pen. So I'm going to put that all the way in the back, grab this light pen and turn it, the opacity down in the size of the brush. Let's just try like 15 and then just kind of add like ripples through the water and stuff. that looks like really, really bright, but we're gonna soften it out. So then you can go up and use this gush and blur and kind of blur it out a little bit. And you can always reduce the opacity here too, just like a little bit until it's more along the lines of what you wanted. And then I'm just gonna repeat it with some of the other colors too. some of these gold ones. Blur it out. And let's add some here. So I want to be able to blur it. So even though it's also gold, I should have drawn it up front. So I'm going to make it a new layer so that I don't blur my other one even further. Just do um, just like a little bit more here. Okay, and this reflection in the water, I want it to go like all the way down here. And let's see, I might even take that down a little further. It's just like barely there. All right, and then the last thing is we need to add in our little boat. So I'm gonna turn my sketch layer back on so I can see where that boat's gonna go. And it's gonna be completely black because it's a silhouette. And let's see, I need a kind of like a clean brush. Let's try um, the monoline brush in the calligraphy section, just real little and just kind of like and getting um, a silhouette of a boat shape, something like that. Okay, so then that boat's gonna be in um, the very top. Let's turn everything back on, turn off our sketch. It's hard to see because it's not over reflection. So I'm actually just gonna scooch it over and make it a little smaller. And make it over like one of these reflections so it's a little more obvious. And probably around there would be good. Maybe something like more like that. Okay, so that'll pretty much do it. You can also do this with like um, the city line in the in the background or like a grassy field with people. I saw um, a picture that was pretty cool. It was like a field of people and then some people had like their phones up. Um, so it would be kind of cute to like uh, cut and paste this 
skyline like onto like a little uh, rectangle it looks like it's someone holding up their phone to take a picture um, there's a lot of things you can do with it but it's just kind of like a fun way to play with the brushes that procreate gives you um, a nice fun piece of art to make for independence day and uh, just a way to like kind of like learn how to add lighting and stuff like that so i hope this was fun for you if you enjoyed it be sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's. And if you post your artwork, I'd love to see your fireworks. So if you post it on Instagram or Facebook, you can tag me at my McDoodles or hashtag my McDoodles so I can see your art and I would love to see your skyline. Hope this was fun for you and I'll see you next time.